So you want to know how long it takes to heat up a still, depending on the elements you have, or the propane burner you're using, or the stove top that you're using? Stick with us because we're going to answer that question and we're going to simplify it so that anybody can figure that out. Welcome brewers, hobbyists, and those who are just flat out curious. Uh, we're glad to have you with us today. Now, based on that introduction, this, is, this will be a two-part video at a minimum. So here in part one, I just need to explain the basis and the background for exactly what we're trying to get at and how we're going to get there. Now, I've moved all of my reference materials aside, and trust me, I've been working on this for about three weeks. Um, and it, it, this is one of those topics that take you down so many different roads, and as you start to answer the questions, the what-ifs, the what are the alternatives, why does it do that? Um, once you answer all of those questions, it really boils down to that one simple question. How long does it take to heat my still? Well, what we're going to answer is, because if we know this information, how long should it take? Using a scientific approach, how long should it take to heat my still from one temperature to the desired temperature that I'm looking for? And we can figure that out. Now, we can take that information, oh yeah, and compare that to how long does it take? What will that tell us? It will tell us how efficient our system is. See, these are indicators that will also explain and also demonstrate for us what is the proper element selection. Do I have too much element? Do I have not enough element? How much heat am I losing during my process? So how efficient is my process? And how can I control it? You see, there's so many things that this, again, this opens up the door to answer that one simple question. How long should it take to heat my still? Now, I know that most of you probably wrestle with the same issues that I wrestled with as I, as I started walking my way into this, was that, wow, I looked, I've got so many different elements. I've got, here's a 5,500 watt element. Here's a 5,000 watt element. I've got a 3,500, I've got a 4,500, I've got a 2,000 watt element. Uh, but the one thing that they all have in common is they're all rated by wattage, uh, which is the amount of power that they're able to produce. Um, well, yeah, it, in a way, just consider that is a value of the efficiency of or the capability of a heating element. Now, interestingly enough, um, this same process or this same question answering routine really lends itself to other systems. Like if we're going to use a propane burner, we can determine the same thing. Uh, if we're going to use an electric cooktop uh, or if we're going to use a natural gas stove, uh, we can determine the same thing because all of that boils down to comparing energy input versus energy requirement. Oh, this actually opens up this entire process uh, because remember, what we're trying to do is we have a still, all we want to do is control the heat of what is in our still. One way to describe this is, uh, let's consider, just, just consider for a moment that uh, we have a certain amount of energy, whether that be a, an element, oh yes, there we go, whether that be an element, whether that be a hot plate up underneath your still, or whether that be a propane burner under the still, or whether this be a kettle that's placed on top of a natural gas stove. Uh, in all of those examples, we're doing the same thing, okay? We're inputting energy into our kettle. <laughs> now, we have to stop and think about this uh, because it's one of the factors that we most often disassociate ourselves or not consider. If we're inputting energy, what is happening at the same time? Your turn. Yeah, we're losing energy. You see, we have those outside influences, first and foremost of which is the energy going in is being absorbed by the material inside, being the mash. 
Okay, that's the first thing that takes place. As that energy rises and it starts to build, it starts to dissipate through the sides of the kettle. And that is based on, of course, again, ambient temperature, uh, construction material of your kettle. Um, it could be drafts. Uh, so those are the outside influences that have an effect on the efficiency of your system. So let's take, for instance, um, if, if we just say the energy that we're, we're putting in is 1. Okay, we're going to give it a value. Of, we're going to put in 1 of whatever it is. We're putting it in. Uh, and we know that with 1, it takes 1 minute. Okay? It takes one minute to heat this up to wherever it is we want to go. That's one to one. All right. Uh, but then we time it. We find out that it takes two to get there. Well, we go, well, we know that one should take one minute. But one's taking two minutes. So how efficient is that? It's 50%. It's half efficient. Which means we're losing half of that one that we're putting in. You see where I'm going now. Um, now we can determine what is our energy loss. Because at the end of the day, our sole, our, our sole function in actually operating a still is controlling energy loss. Yes. Remember, we, we, we are going to heat our mash to a point of vaporization. And as that vapor rises up the column, we want to control it. We want to maintain the temperature with as little heat loss as possible until we reach the point of what we call the point of no return. And that's where the vapors exit your still. See, that's why we measure the temperature there because that's the temperature that we want to control. So you see, in, at the end of the day, all we're doing is controlling heat loss. But if we don't consider the amount of heat loss prior to getting to the top of our still, or wherever the exit port of our still is, well, I think we're doing ourselves a disservice. Um, and then, at, of course, that's where we find that we start having problems. Um, some of those problems associated with that is, let's say, for instance, we have an element that is just not strong enough. It's just not strong enough to maintain the temperature because the heat loss is greater than the energy or the heat input. Well, then what do we have? Well, we start having different wide variances in temperatures at the top of the still because we're trying to input energy but at the same time we're losing that energy so fast or we may not ever achieve the temperature that we're looking for so far so good yeah all right consider this as well is that if we have an element and or a heat source that is too strong what are the results of that well you have these very, very wide temperature range or uh, temperature swings because you, you're inputting more energy than you're losing or you're inputting more energy than you're able to control. So you have these spikes and your temperature will spike high and then drop low, spike high and drop low. And then you start this cycle. Now, there are many, many different things that can cause that. Of course, one being an overpacked column where you build up a physical resistance where energy starts to build up and it finally has enough energy in order to overcome that resistance and pff, it blows up the column and of course your energy your temperature spikes shuts off and then drops back down so you see all of this information that we're going to determine is going to give you then some insight on very, on, on several different levels. Uh, what size element do I need? Uh, is my element too large? Is my element too small? Uh, is my hot plate working efficiently or is it less efficient than another source? Uh, what about propane? Uh, my heat control, am I able to use a simple on-off switch? A thermostat, can I use a pulse width modulator? What is the best source or do I use a proportional integral derivative control PID? Um, you see, these, this will tell you all that information, and you'll be able to make those determinations, those selections, based solely on answering that one simple question. How long should it take to heat my still?
Stay tuned for part two because we're going to jump right into making that determination and then showing you how we calculate that. But we're going to do it in such a way that you'll be able to pick up your calculator after we're finished and go, I got this. Just a couple of different entries and I know the answer. Happy distilling.